Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Eric Bird, here at StopStrugglingNow.com. And today, we're going to talk about a mini real estate course. That's right. It's going to be going down right now in a few minutes, so please stay tuned. And we're going to talk about housing prices, ladies and gentlemen. Reason why it matters is because there's going to be a frenzy when the prices start dropping due to increased interest rates. You're going to be able to take advantage. But are you going to be ready? Because you're going to need credit scores that are a little bit higher. But we're not talking about credit today. We're talking about what we need to do in the next nine months. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Short nine months, prices are going to drop and you should be ready for it because this is a wealth transfer. And welcome. Stop struggling now, gear. Check. And please like, subscribe, and click the bell below so you get the latest updates. Now, let's get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here on the Stop Struggling Now YouTube channel page. So please share the videos because you never know who you're going to help. But today we're going to get into the mini course, the real estate investing mini course. But first, please notice the members here, our members of the channel over here on the right hand side. That's not all of them, ladies and gentlemen. They have become a member by joining, hitting the join button. So please support the channel financially. That means hit the join button. And also don't forget that subscribe button over here. Under the community tab, members receive special messages specifically for them, a couple of videos specifically for them per month. And on Wednesday night live streams, they also are the only ones that can be in the chat room. And always any member of the SSN Nation can come join me on the live stream and talk about anything they want to. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into this. I'm going to start with just the basics for you. How about this? You have to understand you're going to be able to partake in real estate investing. If you feel that you have not been able to at this point, I understand home prices have went up 20% year over year. That's a lot of going up. I mean, appreciation is crazy. Something that could have cost 300000 now is going to cost three sixty the following year. And then the next year, it's going to cost four thirty. That's insane, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody gets those type of wages. So the wage increase like that, I'm going to show you right now. Here is one of the problems why prices are going to come down. And this is going to be your opportunity for the wealth transfer. Now, don't fall to all these naysayers talking about there's these corporations who have millions of dollars and billions of dollars and they're going to be trying to buy up all these cheap properties this is part of the game ladies and gentlemen they're already been buying up these properties that's the whole point so you're going to be able to buy up properties that they're not going to be buying because they can't be everywhere and the prices are going to drop across the board millions of homes are going to be available nobody's going to be borrowing that type of money when they're going to have to spend two hundred thousand dollars hundred and fifty thousand dollars two hundred and fifty thousand dollars per house start doing the numbers somebody says i want a thousand of those two hundred and fifty thousand dollar houses that just fell from four hundred thousand down to 250 that's a lot of money all right so you can see for yourself let's set this up for you so you understand because you're an oc ordinary citizens the average personal income in the united states is sixty three thousand dollars with the median income across the country being only $44,000. Real wages, average, 2022. I'll have a link down below for this world population review that talks about this for this page. So once you understand median income, that is generally, if there's, we'll say 300 million people, 
at the 150 million person, whatever that income is, that's median. Average is a little different. Average is based on how many people actually have a job and then what are their wages. You add them all together and divide by the number of people. That's a little bit different calculation and that's why you have a higher number. Average wage, $67,000 in 2022. $5,000 a month, pretty doggone good, except if you're trying to buy a home. And I'm about to show you why that's not going to be good enough. Here's what you need for a $200,000 mortgage, ladies and gentlemen. This is with a 3.5% down payment, which is an FHA loan. You may not be able to get those when this uh, economy goes further south and when they raise the interest rates even more and they meaning the Federal Reserve Bank so that's for a $200,000 mortgage I don't know where you're gonna get one but you need to make around sixty two thousand dollars that's the average wage let me know where you're buying a two hundred thousand dollar house at these days ladies and gentlemen even in bad neighborhoods homes are more than that these days all right now let's go move down a little bit because this one right here is the one that a lot of people seem to omit and when we're here talking on the live streams i always discuss the median home price in america the last few months has been around four hundred and fifty thousand dollars so everybody's immune to this because prices have went up and you don't think nothing of it but you can see right here on the screen ladies and gentlemen if you want to buy a $500,000 home, and a lot of you know there's a ton of those for sale, your salaries have to be somewhere between 165 and 200 k All right? Household income has to be that. That's already twice as much if two people are earning the median or the average home price is 67. That's only 130, 140. You're not there. You're not going to qualify. And guess what's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen? When the interest rate goes up, this number that you see now as far as 165 k to 200000 that's going to increase. Just add up another 10000 15000 It's going to be where a $500,000 house, you're going to have to be making somewhere around one eighty to two twenty. There's not that many people that make 180 to 220. So therefore, any homes that go on the market, they're gonna be sitting there for a while and sooner or later, people are gonna start reducing their price. And with the biggest increase of all, the interest rate is gonna go up. That means you can afford less at that point, which means housing prices are going to have to come down. So how do we get telltale signs? And what does this have to do with us investing and taking advantage of this? Here's the bottom line. I'll make it early for you. If home prices continue to be at this level, there won't be many for sale. Therefore, they have to come down in value, which now means you are entering into a buyer's market. You have to be patient. There's going to be temptation out here. Because you're going to be looking at things going, wow, that house was four hundred thousand and it and it's now four hundred and fifty. Well, that's nice, but four hundred and fifty. But instead of the interest rate being five point one percent, it's six point five percent. So is it really a deal? We're going to have some numbers. So stay tuned. I'll actually put in the mortgage calculator. You know, I like to do things in real time because this is the SSN Nation mini course for real estate today. Here you can see on the screen already a long list of mortgage layoffs, mergers, closures. How about this? You might be just thinking, oh yeah, I just heard about one or two, two or three, no biggie. Well, here's the thing. Look at this latest update. Wells Fargo, 107 jobs left. Redwood Trust acquires Riverbend Lending, so they merged. These guys, Annie Mac merges. First Guarantee Mortgage files 11, uh, the Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Mid America Mortgage has to rebrand. First Guarantee Mortgage cut 428. Barclays acquires Kensington. Notice these mergers. 
notarize, let go 25% of staff, Redfin slash nearly 500 jobs. This just keeps going on and on and on. And these are the mortgage lenders. If there were so many buyers, why are mortgage lenders having to go out of business, file bankruptcy, or partner up? There isn't that much business, ladies and gentlemen. You have been bamboozled. You have been fooled once again because who were buying these homes were big time corporations and yes individuals would also but you don't know what the difference is all you know is a home was sold you don't know really who the buyer is nor do you care all you know is wow somebody else bought another seven hundred thousand dollar house who are these people how do they sell millions of these when somebody has to make damn near three hundred and fifty four hundred thousand dollars just to get that house so now you understanding these guys are putting their bullets out there already so this thing about these big time corporations are going to be buying up stuff when prices come down you guys have to understand they leverage their monies they leverage these homes as collateral to get more additional funding so now when that collateral goes from 500 or 450,000 or 400,000 it goes down to 300,000 their collateral there's like, hey, where's our money? You got to put some money back over here to balance this back out for your collateralized loan. Now, all of a sudden, they can't go out here and just have fun buying up whatever they want. They're going to have to pay attention to being at home. So again, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be able to take advantage of this. Open door to acquire red door. Zillow offers shutdown. 25% of staff to be let go. Look at this, it just continues. So I'm giving you warning signs, they're flashing already. If they're doing that, then that tells you something. Look at this here. Sales of newly built homes tumbled over 16% in April while prices soared. Now, think about this. You're sitting there watching your neighbor's homes go up in price, the people, your friends, your family, you keep hearing, damn, I bought this house for 350,000 in the last two years. I can't believe our neighbors just sold theirs for 600 grand. But underneath all of this, home prices, home sales, new home sales have been dropping. Because remember, $450,000. Somebody has to make well into the $100,000 to qualify for these homes. All right. Now, let's keep moving. Here's where home listing prices fell the most in March. Look at this. Toledo, Ohio, Rochester for everybody on podcast. Number one, Toledo, Ohio at 18, negative 18%. That's almost 20%. So much for that uh, equity of 20% last year. Rochester, minus 17%. Again, Detroit, minus 15 Pittsburgh, minus 13 Mass Springfield, Mass, minus 5.8%. Tulsa, minus 5%. Los Angeles, minus 5%. Memphis, Tennessee. On this whole list, Los Angeles, California, average home listing price is $1,985,000, ladies and gentlemen. And the fact the price only went down $50,000 is amazing. That's the most expensive market on this list. Everybody is $399,000 and under, and Chicago is $399,000. And they're number nine. Richmond, Virginia is $310,000. Everybody else is under two hundred dollars in the twos and even under two for a few markets. This is just a slow boil waiting to happen because these homes almost uh, 8 out of 10 are reasonable 200,000, 230, 75,000, 149, 115 that's all reasonable prices but yet the prices are coming down so therefore you may be in some of these markets but why buy now? you should just continue to wait there's no reason to jump in and bail somebody out and then you get it and now find out the property drops another 5 to 10 to 15 percent you don't want to be in that position, right? That's part of being astute and understanding. Now, there's a correlation between interest rates increases and prices going up or down. You might notice this chart that I brought out here because real home price appreciation has been negative more often than nominal home price appreciation. Again, 
You have to pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, because it does matter when you enter the market. So this is way, way back in the 1980s. And you can see when they've reached up here about this 10% to 15% mark, all of a sudden home prices start coming crashing down. Not like just a little down, crashing down. And again, up here at the 10% mark, they have a dip. But this is in the 80s. That's when there was a housing crash in the 80s, right? Then in the 90s, because there was one in the late 90s, it started, late 80s, I mean. And then in the 90s, it started again. But look, from the 90s to 2005, which is literally what we are right now from 2010 to 2022, if we didn't have the pandemic, things would have already kicked off. But because we had the pandemic and then we had bonus money, stimulus money fired into the economy, and then we had loan money, EIDL, PPP loans, and unemployment type deals, all of that delayed what was supposed to happen. You notice once again, when we get to that 10% number, it took from 1991 to 2000, around six, that's 15 years of growth. Everybody was loving life until the plug had to come out. And look what happened. Fell off of a cliff. But notice something very carefully. Over the last 40 years, that 15% in the mark has never been surpassed. But every time you got between that 10 and 15, that created a market decline. We haven't had that market decline. And there's reasons why. So if you want to take a risk and buy a house right now and think that you're going to be fine coming up, history says you won't be fine. I had to bring this up so you understand that if you're going to be a real estate investor, this is going to be your chance to get in on the greatest wealth transfer with regard to real estate on the planet. Now, we're going to keep it going, keep it moving. Bear with me another three, four minutes because you're not going to be able to do what you were able to do the previous 10 years. You may have to put down 20% or more. You don't know what's going to happen, especially when these mortgage companies continue to go by the wayside because they're not going to have enough loans. Developers are going to abandon projects. All right. The odds of regional home prices dropping over the coming year. Now, this is core logic. I'll have a link to this. But again, this is just guesswork. But here's the thing. If the Federal Reserve announced tomorrow that they're not going to increase interest rates, now you have to go, where do I find a house? All right? There's an opposite effect here. Because if the interest rates come down, that's when you have to start going, okay, there's a correlation between price drop and how high the Federal Reserve's increased the interest rates. So if they all of a sudden wake up, whether it's a year from now, two years from now, it doesn't matter what year or month they say, hey, uh, we're not going to mess with interest rates and then they're going to give guidance that we're going to reduce interest rates. That's your sign right there to say, OK, the bubble will be inflated shortly. So now you have to determine, let me get in the market. Otherwise, there's no reason to jump in. All right. Regional home prices dropping over the coming year. And red means very high. And that blue that you see everywhere is very low. Now, I'm going to disagree with this chart. I don't know what they're figuring it on. But we all know Texas has been overpriced with homes. Florida overpriced homes. In the Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia area, people have been moving all into this area. Home prices have increased dramatically. Arizona, home prices increased dramatically. Nevada, home prices increased dramatically. All of these, in my opinion, over the next coming year are going to be coming down. And in, and in the Southwest, which is Nevada, Arizona, Southern California... New Mexico may be even included in that. There's a water issue over there. So there's more than just interest rates and a bubble. There's other things such as no water, no life. 
So anybody living out there that depends on that Colorado River, I suggest you seriously go look at the Lake Mead water levels right now. And now you might determine now's the time for you to move or sit there and wait. But all I'm saying is you seriously should be checking out that water level. And that also is going to be a hot spot for very, very low price homes. So as an investor, I wouldn't be jumping over there. All right, let's keep it moving. You guys understand you want to be an investor, so you need some funding, right? Well, we have somebody here on our live streams on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Usually, he's not in all of them, but Mr. Wilson Koo does loans, ladies and gentlemen. Even he's in the mortgage business, and he sees things getting tightened up. All right? They're changing the requirements. So, again, this will change the way a person can buy a home, which means, again, home prices are going to stop dry, uh, start diving because people who could qualify last year can't qualify this year all right so this chart right here is united states existing home sales and notice we've had a nice run for the last like i say 12 years pretty much i mean you've got some ups you got downs but hey that's a market for you that's good that's price discovery because some people bought like in 2014 in this little bucket area here then prices went up and they said hey let me uh let me home price existing home sales went up i should say not prices home sales they went up but that's because people were buying interest rates were low interest rates have been low for generally the last 12 years and then in around this era 2017 2018 the fed said let me just reduce interest rates and home sales even though went down which is remarkable but on the flip side home prices went up and then after the pandemic when some people got PPP loans stimulus money EIDL loans and a whole bunch of other loans after the pandemic a skyrocket in home sales a skyrocket which is incredible but I want to get you to 2022, which I'm hovering above right now. This is the highest mark, probably. I don't know the older chart numbers. I'm not going to pull that up. But this is probably going to be the highest since about 2005 or six to even get in this ballpark over 6,000 existing home sales, which is not 6,000, right? It's like 6 million home sales. All right, I use thousands because that's what you see over there, but that's really six million. But here's the thing this year, it was 6.5 million homes for sale or have sold. United States existing home sales, it's dropped to 5,500. We're going on a steep decline. It's not like 2020 when there was a pandemic and you just shut it off. It's not like this little 2014, 2015 drop here. This is significant. A million. All right. So you're going to have to start figuring out, is this a time for me to wait or time for me to buy? Again, I'm just going to show you this from Toronto. Now, they're ahead of us, ladies and gentlemen. They're ahead of us. Home sales plunge 41%. Prices drop for fourth month. Now you see why in Canada, that's where Toronto is, sale prices going down, mortgage lenders going out of business, all of it happening all at once, which now means there's even prices, home sales, everything's going to continue to drop because interest rates are being increased at the same time. This happened in June in Toronto. Home sales plunge 41%. Keep it in mind. So now we're here. Here's that $450,000. I've included the taxes and the fees. And this is with a $90,000 down payment. And you still have the honor of buying a home for $2,866 per month on a 6.4% 30-year fixed loan with a credit score between 700 to 719. That's with taxes. That's with insurance. That's with everything, ladies and gentlemen. 
Now, you guys can already do the math. You got to basically make three times the number after tax, after you have, uh, after you have your other expenses. Because if you have other expenses, then this number has to go up even higher than three times the number. So generally, nine thousand. So you're already going to be at 108000 And if you have a credit card, if you have a car loan, if you have any other expenses that you pay monthly, you're going to have to do three times whatever that number is in income. So you, that's why you're going to have to be in the 120 range, 140 range, somewhere in there for household income if you want to buy this home. Again, there's not that many people that's going to qualify. Businesses are going to qualify those guys that get free money from the Federal Reserve is going to qualify, obviously, because they can get loans in the millions. But they're going to run out of money. It's that simple. So you got advantages that you have is all yours, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So that's the mini course. And the mini course also tells you that you need to pay attention. Start planning right now. Your favorite neighborhoods. You guys have heard me talk about this before. You're sitting there right now going, man, I wanted to buy this house over here in this neighborhood, but they wanted $600,000. I can't qualify for that. If that house dropped to $400,000, would you be happy? If it dropped to three hundred and fifty, dollars would you be happy? That's what could happen. So you're not going to be left out in the cold, but this is going to be one of the last times in my opinion, that ordinary citizens are going to be able to afford to get in in the real estate game as far as single family properties. Multifamily properties is a whole nother ball game. That's another video. But if we're going to talk about that, and I will briefly, the prices for those will not change because it goes off of the net operating income. It goes off of how much profit there is. So if a, if a property, because it's 15 unit apartment complex, is going to be making $400,000 per year in today's rent, everybody here knows I can raise the rent 5% next year for every tenant. That just increased the value of my property as well because we're going to have more profit. So now the value increases. So you can actually increase your value just by raising the, the rates. So that's a whole different ball game and that's going to be a lot harder to get into because you will need that 25 percent down and you're going to have an increased value in these properties because as you guys know rental rates are off the charts when you can charge people studio and one bedroom apartments in major cities two thousand dollars or more that's insane so just keep all that in mind. You're going to have an opportunity, whether you're going to do multifamily or single family real estate. But you can't miss out on this next one. We're all going to have to jump in and get something. All right. And with all that said, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And please like, subscribe and click the bell below so you get the latest updates. And I know it's hard out here, and that's why we always have to talk about different ways of monetizing what you need to do in life. This is one way that you can create wealth, especially in our future. Because corporations and hedge funds and everybody that's looking for that 5 to 10% to give to their shareholders, they're going to be buying real estate, and it's going to be all millions of people that cannot afford home ownership, and they're going to be on the rent rolls. And now you're going to be at the mercy of these price gougers where Carol, okay, a, a, a Carol is a business. They raised rents 30% last year. All right. That's what you have to understand. They don't care about you. 30%. Really? If you're paying $1,500, you're really going to raise somebody's rent 30%? $500? That's insane. I mean, they have no regard for you guys, ordinary citizens. None, no regard for us at all. So with all that said, be disgusted, but plan on getting some of this wealth transfer because that's what they're going to do. The prices are going to drop. They're not going to pay back their lenders. 
They're going to use that money that they are able to reborrow or get from their existing tenants. And then they're going to try and buy up these low cost homes as well. But there's going to be millions for sale. So be prepared. Have your credit in order. I have the smart credit link down below that monitors it. That'll keep you up to date even better than Credit Karma. Yes, you pay for it, but it's a lot better than just one of these other paid for programs. At least they can send out uh, letters for you. You can do it in the back office to help improve your credit and stay on top of it. Let you know if you pay X amount, well, if your credit score will go up or down. So that's very cool. But you're going to have to stay on top of this because this wealth transfer that's happening right now, you got to get in, ladies and gentlemen. There's no way about, no way around it. I'm saying it again. And with all that said, keep your head up, keep moving, and I'm out.